All right, guys, what's going on? So I wanted to make a raid guide with all the bosses and only the bosses, not the beginning part of the game. And I wanted to try and make the best possible raid guides or at least tips and strategies that I have and I've used that are really useful, but they haven't been mentioned anywhere else. So for Wasik, before we even get into what Wasik does and how you should tackle Wasik himself, I want you guys to know what the room selection logic is. Now one out of all six of you guys, whoever understands the logic best and the easiest should be the only person that calls out the room. No one else should be calling out the room at all, okay? So here's the room lo uh, room logic. So while six in front of you, you have four rooms, one, two, three, four. One is bottom left, two is bottom right, three is top right, and four is top left or middle left, whichever one you wanna call it. So the only time you need to check the room is once you see the message that says at the bottom, after you DPS on Wasik, then it says SIVA density critical. So the one person that understands this logic can stop everything that he's doing, stop going for boss damage or anything. And he's gonna look back left, which is in room number one. If room number one is lit, then you just call room one for everyone, or you call back left for everyone. And then everyone's just gonna run into room one and back left. So if it's not lit, then if it's not back left, then start moving on the right side. Don't even look if, if two is lit or not, just start moving on the right side. Cause one of two or three will be lit. If it's room number two, just move into room number two and back right. And if it's not one or two, then it's gonna be room number three. So that's the first phase logic, right? So it's gonna be one, two or three, you never have to go into room four or top left. Now say it was room one uh, in the first one. So then this time you are going to exclude room number four, even if it's lit. Then if it was room number one, then you just start moving on the right side right off the bat in the second phase that you have to get, get the room. So it's gonna be either room number two or room number three. If it's room number two, go into that. If it's not, then go into three. So say we get, uh, if it's not room number one in the first time, it's not room number two on the first time, it's room number three, all right? So in the second phase, what you're gonna do is you start moving on the left now. And you're not gonna look on back left, you're not, uh, you're not gonna look on back right, you're not gonna look if two is lit or not. You start, you're gonna straight up start moving into one or four and you look if it's back left then you move there, if it's uh, front left then you move there. So that's the Wasik logic, it's pretty simple. Just uh, think about it again, have one person on your team understand the Wasik logic and then just have that one person call it out when it says SIVA density critical. The biggest problem and the most um, infuriating and the most frustrating death in this game at, in this boss fight is actually if you get amazing damage on him and then someone or the other manages to die when you have to go into the room to try and stay safe. Um, if everyone wants to stop, then literally everyone can just stop um, getting damage on him in, at, the, at the very final end. But uh, I'm just saying people can still get final damage on him before someone calls the room. So only one person is needed to call the room right at the end. All right, guys, so this is where my, I'm going to have my video of me going, um, finishing Vosik with some of my friends. So three of my friends, me, Krypton, and Siri had already done this. Uh, and three of my friends were brand new first timers who'd never done this before. They were on 385s or maybe even a little bit lower. Uh, I was a little bit higher level. Let's start off at saying the most important prerequisites if you haven't even ever done the raid. Um, let's go with tier one, two, and three in terms of getting uh, armor and weapons. So let's go weapons first. I personally believe weapons are more important. So let's go. <clears throat> Tier one weapons would be if you have Firefly on any weapon. Most people have the hung jury with triple tap and Firefly. Make sure to use that one or you can use a hand cannon, which is really high impact. So they will probably one shot uh, most of the ads. Use Firefly. It is really helpful in this game. Make sure to use Firefly as your primary weapon. If you don't have Firefly, then go for life support and anything. I do have a hung jury that has both Firefly and life support. It's an amazing, it's a godly role, it's a godly weapon, and I love this for PvE. It's better than anything that I have besides that. Um, that is the most important in terms of uh, tier one weapons. Um, then the the tier one weapons for damage on Axis are gonna be Gallahorns, Sleeper Sims, then if you have a sword, frankly, swords are really not that important, but Galhorns and Sleeper Sims. And then if you have a sniper, that is a high impact sniper. If you have the Rage Sniper, you probably don't if you haven't ever done it. If you have the Rage Sniper, then that's perfect. Like I'm using it right now. If you don't have it, then the Thousand Yard Stairs or Triple Tap are great, or even the Vanguard, no, the Crucible Sniper that they have right now with the super fast reload spray and play, that's amazing as well. So yes, uh, that would be all of your weapons. Um, in terms of weapons, uh, I'm gonna get back to if someone needs to use shotguns and who has to use shotguns and who has to use snipers if you wanna use them. 
Um, I would just say that snipers are probably better priority, higher priority than, than shotguns simply because you can use them both on the monitors and you can use them for boss DPS. Uh, in terms of the Outbreak Prime being used, I would suggest uh, not using an exotic or not using the Outbreak Prime despite it being really good for this because it, it acts like another Firefly. But if you want to use um, Galahorns and Sleeper Sims for higher damage on, on Axis or Voxus, um, then you would probably want to use, not use Opt uh, the Optimus Prime or the fact that Outbreak Prime. Um, yes. Now, going into raid armor or just armor priority. Armor priority number one would have to be raid armor if you have it. You probably don't have it if you haven't ever done it before. If you haven't ever done it before, then use it as a build. So you want to have intellect discipline on your war, no, on your titans because they want to use grenades and supers all the time. You want to have intellect and strength on your night stalkers because they're going to have to use uh, invisibility and uh supers tethers all the time in terms of warlocks uh you could go self res if you've never done it before i guess uh, getting two lives is really important then you could probably go for discipline and strength because you, you're going to end up getting your super and never ever using it so you probably want to go discipline and strength on tom um, on a warlock so that would be how you would choose your uh, armor uh, that would be tier two tier three would have to be uh if you can combine that and also you can combine say you're going to use galahorns and you have uh, heavy weapon boots uh, oh, sorry, Galahorn boots, or if you have um, uh, snipers, and if you're going to be using snipers, then you have sniper ammo, um, chest pieces, and ra and um, gauntlets would be anything that you're using, and uh, and a fast reload. Like I'm using fast reload scout rifles and this, and I have a fast reload pulse rifle raid gear as well. Um, tier one, would, by the way, tier one is obviously raid gear, but for a titan, it has to be rune wings. Rune wings is amazing uh, on the raid. <laughs> Uh, the, besides that, if you don't have rune wings for a titan, I would suggest uh, ga the Twilight Garrison. Twilight Garrison is just fucking amazing. Alright. Besides, alright, so now that we're done with what you need in terms of gear, in terms of armor and weapons, let's go. We're already on the failsafe logic, so let's have. What is the next? So the objectives priority list. So it just because it's a boss fight, most people actually get confused and they just think that it's all about the boss and they try and save all their supers for the boss. They try and save all their heavy for the boss. They try and save most of their snipers or you know all their snipers on the boss. The objective priority list is actually quite the opposite. It is staying alive. Staying alive is actually the number one thing. All right, so stay alive. It's a it's, uh, it's hard raid. You're not going to get respawned. You're probably, if you haven't done it already, most people are on the higher lights are probably not going to take you. So you're going to be stuck with other people that are also low light, which is which is fine because the first time I did it, I was like 385, which is not that low. I, I understand that. but And I died a lot as well. But I did not have all the tips that I have right now. So you can still do it. Just stay alive. Um, all right. So the number one priority would be exploding shanks. Uh, and, you know, you want to have to stay alive in that explosion exploding shanks phase so do not sacrifice yourself trying to get that one bomb for that one dps on on um, on voxes uh, if the shanks are alive you want to tether or you want to use the bombs on the shanks themselves it doesn't matter if you waste a few vosic bombs on getting the shanks or the ads so in, in terms of shanks go for tethers and bombs after that would be captains captains are really high priority they take a lot of damage and they dish out a lot of damage as well and if you're a lower level say you're 3d5 or lower you're going to take a lot of damage from the other captains so bombs on the captains are fine as well tethers and supers on the captain are fine as well using heavy in terms of grenade uh, in terms of your galahorns and sleeper sims on the captain is fine as well and also sticky nades in terms of warlocks and titans are fine on the captain as well Trash mobs would be after that because believe it or not, the boss does not do anything. You either die a stupid death because of not getting into the room or you never get to the boss uh, because the ads kill you. So trash mobs would be the next priority. After that, I would say connecting bombs on the boss are the priority. Not even the boss DPS, connecting bombs on the boss. So if you, if you do uh, grab your bombs and you don't throw it on the boss at the exact same time as your other teammates, it's not going to help. So you want to have to throw the bombs on the boss at the exact same time, but that's the second last priority. And believe it or not, the final priority would actually be damage on the boss. Because most people, 370 plus, are going to be doing a lot of damage. They're going to be taking over a quarter of his health every time. So you only, so you have like five tries, so you're going to be really good. I genuinely feel boss damage is the absolute least important thing. That said, using Galahorns and Sleepers on the boss uh, would be an amazing thing. If you don't have Galahorns and Sleepers, then high impact snipers that I've already mentioned before are amazing on the boss. Also, do make sure to throw those SIVA bombs at the end because they do 130,000 damage at 390 light and they do 100 plus thousand damage no matter what your light is. 
Um, so you want to do that because that's that's more than like four sniper shots of a high impact sniper. So you want to throw that in as well uh, when you have the opportunity. Okay, so priority list is done as well. Now, in terms of if you look at the game that's happening in front of you, I'm actually soloing middle as a 397 because I I can. The only uh, time that I ever need help really is actually with uh, tethers when I have too many ads on me so I use my own tether and I ask other people besides me to, th to tether as well they're also at the most important and the hardest part of um, the Vosik phase which is after two phases or after 50% of his health he's gonna start spawning exploding shanks and shanks so the the place that gets the maximum exploding shanks is actually in the middle so I keep asking for tethers in the middle uh, night stalkers do help your people in the middle do not save your tethers only for your side do not be selfish because you have maximum exploding shanks in the middle if they don't get them they're gonna come towards your side and kill you as well so you need tethers in the middle uh, yeah, so there's a bomb in the front and the back. So bomb throwers, in my opinion, can be night stalkers that can go invisible and get the bomb in front, and then walk the ba uh, walk the first bomb, the front bomb, back onto the second bomb, and then you go for a really quick uh, three, two, one, throw the first one, and then immediately pick up the second one. They go three, two, one, and second one. So night stalkers or warlocks, since warlocks uh, have self res, and um, even if they do die trying to get the first bomb in front of them on either side, they can still you know self res and throw the, both of the bombs. Uh, after that, then I would say just a really good titan. If a titan's a really good player, or they have um, uh, what is the shade step thing, then they can just you know make it really quick. But that said, bombs are not high priority. I told you guys, bombs are second highest priority. So if if you have way too many ads in front of you, then just use um, the bombs on either the captains or the ads. Besides all of that, let's go. Uh, strategy of the bomb, like I've mentioned before, one person does both, like I'm doing both. Call it so very fast, please. I've been in a raid that uh, people are calling out three, two, one. That You do not need to be that slow. Do it fast enough. Uh, have the person that's the slowest in terms of getting the bombs or has uh, the hardest time getting the bombs, have him do the call out. So you know that the other two already have the bombs and the, la the Galaska that's doing the call out. Uh, he doesn't even have to ask the others uh, whether they have the bomb or not because they're most probably going to have it. So he's just going to go three, two, one, first, and then pick up the second one, three, two, one, second. Uh, yeah, so if you go really slow, you're going to be out of the fight forever and you're not going to be able to help your teammates. So please throw the bombs fast. Um, one per okay, <laughs> so in my opinion, having it's the best having one person uh, on each side, left, middle, and right. Um, doing the bombs uh, so the other person who's on left middle and right is always shooting the ads always always shooting the ads now there's also only going to be three people in my opinion that's the best way to actually take out the monitor so three people one left one middle one right always taking out the monitor in my opinion i did both obviously but um i could have had i could have done <clears throat> like i have done, i have done actually i have done both throwing um the bombs and the snipers and i've done um throwing the bombs and my teammate does the snipers so i've done it that way as well um so yeah one person's always an ad control one person's duty is always uh snipers and one person's duty is always um uh, throwing the bombs uh so the ad control guy can be doing one of both uh, the other two, you know, throwing the bombs are the snipers. <clears throat> the non-monitor guy, the guy that does not shoot the monitors, can use the shotgun to kill the captains, or he could use the sniper for the boss damage phase as well. Um, or the SIVA bombs on the boss damage phase. Because, yeah, like I mentioned this before, it's equal to five sniper shots, so, you know, it's worth picking up. Um, I'm unsure if Weapons of Light makes a difference on that or not, but if it does, you could just test it in one go and test if it does a lot of damage, then you could probably use a Weapons of Light bomb as well. I've given you guys a fail-safe door selection, Final phase strat for the axe for the shanks that spawn. I would suggest really using tethers on them uh, or using bombs on them and the captain as well. It's all right to use your bombs once again. It's all right to use your bombs on the phase on the shanks phase and the captains because they take a lot of damage and they will cause you to wipe. You do not want to wipe. You could keep going again and again. You can use an extra run. You can use an extra room, but you don't want to wipe. Uh, you don't want to have anyone die. So don't be selfish of tethers in mid. Start using your tethers. Uh, everyone on the left and right also start using your tethers. Do not be stingy about your supers. You will get them. I've seen a lot of titans and a lot of warlocks. Warlocks never use them at all. But I've seen a lot of titans with like weapons of light and other stuff. They never end up using them. Please use your, your bubbles. You're going to keep getting them. There's so many ads to kill. There's so many people around you. People are using memory of scoring and everything. Please use your supers. Boss, uh, boss damage in terms of priority. I'm going to list this down. Sleeper Slim does the highest damage. Galarhorn does the next highest damage. 
all high impact snipers do amazing damage. Raid sniper is really good for this. It does a lot of damage. A thousand yard stare with triple type does a lot of damage. The van the crucible sniper also does a lot of damage on him. Then you have primaries like uh op the uh, outbreak prime or the chaos dogma. Those are actually pretty low damage. I would suggest not going for them at all, in fact. Um all right so that's pretty much it that was all i've done about the raid i hope this is one of the best guides that you've seen i haven't seen another guide like this that gives you the raid armor the armor and uh, a first timer's uh, opinion and the logic phase about uh, selecting the room so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please do remember to leave a like do share this video please do share this video if you enjoyed this video please do share this video with your friends use it uh share it on reddit share it on your gaming uh, Facebook, share it on your WhatsApps or your social media or anything of that sort. Do leave me a like, do leave me a comment if I missed anything out. Uh, if it's really important, I could mention it in the, in the description or I could highlight the comment below. I hope you guys like this. I I have already format the raid uh, back in week one of when it came out, so that was pretty interesting as well. Um, I will be attempting a three man and a four man raid for the heroic mode as well. By the way, I'm also looking for players that are interested in 3-manning and 2-manning the raid. Uh, if there's people that want to challenge themselves in terms of PvE, I am looking for people that want to 3-man and 2-man the raid. I haven't found anyone yet. If you are interested, please do message me. I'm going to add you and we can try and attempt it sometime soon. I hope you enjoyed this video once again. Thank you guys so much for watching.